Okay, so we're now recording the lecture. Uh, one thing that I did notice from the first time that I was recording it uh, with use of screen share, um, it doesn't show my face or anything that I do in the background. Some of you may have found that if you've gone to the YouTube video um, and we were doing series parallel stuff, for the first you know, two minutes of the example, uh, which is on the whiteboard, you can't see anything. So we will make sure that we uh, stop sharing and do all those other things as it necessitates. But to get us started with some code. This is service feeders and branch circuits section eight. Um, section eight's a great little section. This is gonna be the one that is gonna be most formidable for you guys when it comes to figuring out your service uh, feeders and branch circuits. One thing that I will note is that if it doesn't mention your specific branch circuit or item, uh, then you have to find the rules that are referenced to those specifically, whether it's a motor uh, or an air conditioner or um, a space heater. And if you can't find that, then you apply your basic Ohm's law to figuring out how many amps those things are going to draw. Okay. So for starters, our outcome here is going to determine or is to be uh, determining the load on service feeders and branch circuits for a single dwelling. You will find that there are other calculations in this section. Uh, some of them you use, but when it comes to apartment calculations, we won't worry about them. Okay, we are worried specifically here about service feeders for single dwellings. And as you see here, we've got our service wire holders, we've got our three wire system coming in, um, 110 to 120 slash 220 to 240. Um, we've got our service entrance head, conduit, electric meter, electric panel, weatherproof fittings, etc. So we've got a lot of components that go into finding your service. And these objectives can be broken down into different steps. Okay. So to, to define the specific terms that to apply to our residential occupancy is going to be important because if you don't know what a feeder is, then you're not going to know what to look for, right? If you don't know what a service is, specifically a consumer service, and you're not going to know what portion you're going to have to solve for, right? Dwelling unit, building, capacity, etc. So these are terms that you will find in section zero, okay? Some things that the code does not define though are demand factors, demand load, calculated demand, and calculated load. Your demand refers specifically to what a building actually requires to operate based upon statistics rather than maximum possible current required. In the example, that will get explained, okay? For example, real briefly, if I were to say, what is the lighting load on a house, and you figured that out by amps or your circuit demand on plugs, and you figured that out by amps mathematically, it's going to be way over 100 amps because you're going to have your 30 amp dryer, your 40 amp range. That's 70 amps right there. Plus, you got like eight circuits of 12 amps. Well, there's, that's a lot of current and we're only putting it on a 100 amp breaker. So demand is really talking about, statistically speaking, what is going to be operating in this house and what has traditionally operated in single dwellings in the past. Um, demand factor is going to refer to the fact that a circuit or system, once again, generally requires less capacity to operate than the total possible current. All right. When it comes to service feeders, we can go, well, what are they? And we're going to calculate that demand. Why? Well, so we can determine the service conductors and overcurrent device. That's pretty important. When? Well, if you're wiring up a new house or having an upgrade, you got to do this stuff. 
So this is once again, what it looks like in its, um, in its basic form, okay? You've got your supply conductors coming in, your point of entrance, and we've gone over those types of code rules in the past lecture. Um, so what do we mean by calculating our demand factor? When it comes to- Hello, my name is Josh. Whoa. And I will be- One second. Let's, uh... all right. So when it comes to determining the areas, um, this is going to be found in rule 8-110. So if you flip to that rule, it says the living area designated in 8200 and 8202 shall be determined from the inside dimensions and include the sum of 100% of area on the ground floor. 100% of areas above the ground floor used for living purposes, that's key, and 75% of the area below the ground floor, okay? So for our basic load, if we look at 8200, it says that we're going to calculate the load for a service or feeder supplying a single dwelling shall be based on the greater of items uh, A or B. And we focus for basic load on item A and then I. Okay. So a basic load of 5,000 watts for the first 90 meters squared and then 1,000 watts for each additional uh, 90 meters squared or portion in excess of 90 meters squared. This is going to allow us to accommodate for those general receptacles and lighting loads in the house. Okay. Here's the example. The main floor of a house is eight by nine. We've got the upper floor and basement that are going to have the same dimensions as the main floor. What is the total living area? Step one. Focus on the main floor, eight by nine. Remember, we take that at 100%, so we times it by one. We get 72 meters squared. For the upper floor, we do the same thing, eight by nine times by one, or 100%. And the basement, eight by nine times 75%. At this point, we need to add all those up. So we get a total area of 198 meters squared. For the first 90 meters squared, we will have 5,000 watts. So you take your total and minus 90 meters squared. For the second 90 meters squared, you will have 1,000 watts. So you take your remaining total of 108 minus 90, and that's your 1,000 watts there. And the portion, so any portion in excess of that also needs to be included. So that last 18 meters squared will be given a full thousand watts. I don't care if it's one meter squared over. I don't care if it's half a meter squared over. You give it a full thousand watts. Okay? That's how that basic load works. Then we add all those together and get our load, basic load of 7,000 watts. All right. Well, what if we did it a different way? How many 15 amp receptacles are in a house? Roughly 35 to 60 ish. How many lights? Twenty to thirty, roughly. So if we had 15 amps times 60 receptacles. That's 900. And then one amp times 30. Yeah. You can see very quickly that we've exceeded our 100 amps. So that's why we focus on demand factors and demand rather than our calculated, you know, mathematical calculated amperage of those things. Okay.
Yeah, and if we were to find out what size of copper conductor, 930 amps, uh, yeah, go to table two, <laughs> you, you would uh, be hard pressed to find one, right? It's massive. So then if we scroll down and we go to uh, item three in that rule for electric space heating and air conditioners, it directs us to section 62. Okay, so if you flip over to section 62 and you go to 62-118, it instructs us here that we are going to be solving for the demand factors for service conductors and feeders with respect to space heating equipment. If you go to item three, then you or sub rule three, you will find that notwithstanding sub rule one, the heating installation in a building for residential occupancy is provided with an automatic um, thermostatic control device in each room or heated area, the ampacity of the service conductor or feeders supplying heating devices only shall be based upon the following. So you take your first 10,000 or yeah, 10 kilowatts and you take that at 100%. Anything in addition to that, you take it 75%. Okay? That's what that stands for, or that's what that means. When it comes to your air conditioning load, that would be back in that 8-200. And it states that you take any air conditioning load at 100%. Now, if you read this rule carefully, it says any electric space heating loads provided with a demand factor as permitted by section 62, which we just read, plus any air conditioning load at 100%. Subject to, that's a great phrase. Anytime it says subject to, you read whatever it's telling you it's subject to, okay? 8-106. So what does 8106 sub rule three say? It states that if you know that these things are interlocked, then you take the greater of the two. All right? So you only add the heating and AC loads together if they can be ran at the same time. If they can't be, then you take the larger load. All right? And here's an example. We have a 14 kilowatt space heater and a three kilowatt AC unit that are interlocked and are to be installed in a house. What is their demand toward the service calculation? So I'll give you a minute to try and solve this one and then we will come back. So you see very quickly that, be, once again, because they're interlocked, we can just get rid of that AC amount and we focus solely on the highest or the larger of the two. Now, can we add a receptacle for a lamp onto a branch circuit conductor that is going to a heating load? Where do we find information on heating loads again. Section 62, that's exactly it. So we flip back over to section 62. dash one one zero instructs us on branch circuits. And it says in sub rule one, that branch circuit conductors used to, uh, for the supply of energy to heating device sets shall be used solely for such heating device sets. 
So the answer is no. You have a heating load, it's just the heating load. All right. Okay, pardon? No comment? Good. So, next one electric range. Back to 8200. If we have an electric range, how do we figure this thing out? Several one, item A, item four. We'll see that 6,000 watts for a single range. If you have a range, that's what you gotta throw down. If there's an amount in excess of, of 12,000 watts, then you take that excess amount only at 40%. Here's the example. We have an electric range of 14,000 watts. Calculate the demand toward the main service. Remember, it's a single range. Boom, automatic 6,000. Okay. Then we're going to take 40% of the amount that exceeds 12. Well, we've only got 2,000 there. So 2,000 times 0.4 is 800, which gives us a nice 6,800 watts for our range. Okay. Make sense? Any questions on the range? Okay. When it comes to hot water heaters, 8201A5, so electric tankless water heaters, or electric water heaters for steamers, pools, hot tubs, and spas are all going to be calculated at 100%. Yep. Because you got to think that thing can turn on at any time and has to keep up with the demand. On demand water, you might know them as, right? Or the Renai system. Ooh, very smooth. <laughs> so that's why you got to take them at 100%. Um, and that one's pretty self-explanatory. When it comes to electrical ve electric vehicle charging equipment, um, once again, calculated at 100%. Okay, this is item six. It also directs you to 8106 subrule 11. So if you flip over to 8106 subrule 11, it says for the purposes of these other rules and where electrical vehicle energy management system as described in subrule 10 monitors the consumer service and feeders and controls the electrical vehicle supply equipment loads in accordance with rule 8500. The demand load for the electrical vehicle or electric vehicle supply equipment shall not be required to be considered in the determination of the calculated load. So it's saying that when you are determining that load, that service demand, here are some exceptions to that rule. So be aware that there are the exceptions. When it comes to other loads, they must have a rating of 1500 watts, uh, or sorry, in excess of 1500 watts. So that means if I have a rating of 1500 watts, let's say I have a projector, it's 1500 watts, you will not count that projector because it is not 1501. All right, that's how that works. Um, if the house has an electric range, then you add in 25% of all of the other loads. If it doesn't, then you have to go to um, item B. So 100% of the combined load up to 6,000 watts plus 25% of the combined load 
that exceeds 6,000 watts if the electric range has not been provided for. In your service calculations, if we haven't told you about an electric range, this is how you need to calculate your other loads. Okay, item B. If you have one, then it's item A. All right. All right, other load example. A house projector has a rating of 3000 watts. How much load is applied to the total service? Brock, what do you think? I'm not even doing that stuff right now. Ooh. <laughs> Appreciate your honesty. <laughs> so just try and do this example. We've got eight, 200, one, sub rule one, item eight, item A. Remember, we're gonna use item A because the electric range has been provided for. Okay. So we will only take that 3000 at 25%. Or 750 watts. All right. That's how you calculate the other loads with an electric range without add up all the loads. Then your first 6,000 watts will be at hundred percent and anything remain remaining after uh, will be at 25%. Okay. So here's an example with no electric range. We got our house projector. We got a kiln. And we got a mixer. So, Brock, now that you're with us, how would you go about this? You just go through 8200, right? Okay. Couldn't all of those be times by 25%? They could be, except we don't have an electric range. All right. So what you need to do is you need to add up those loads that are in excess. Yeah, you're close, Darren. So you're, you're going to add up the loads that are in excess of 1500 watts. So you've got a projector at three and a kiln at four. So you will add those to seven, right? And you don't include the mixer because it's not greater than 1500 watts, right? It's not in excess. So we don't include it. And then we take that additional thousand watts, right? We said three plus four is seven. We got our basic at six. And then we have seven or 1000 watts at 25%. Or in other words, you would have 6,250. Yep. So that's how you go about that example. Okay. Just like that. Does that make sense for everyone? OK. 
Okay. Don't see any opposition, so we're good to move on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the whole kit and caboodle, okay? Here is an example. So you're gonna get five minutes to try and calculate this on your own, and then I'll go through it with you. The big thing with this example is this is what you need to practice for the exam. Okay, you will see this again. And so you need to get proficient at doing these quickly because when we say code exams take a long time, it's because of these questions. And people aren't prepared to go through the code book in a quick way. So let us practice. I'll give you five minutes and then we'll come back at her. And Brock, you know I'm coming for you. All right, let's take a kick at it. Did you guys get a total load of 19,625? No? Yes? Maybe? All right. Here's how we go about it. For the basic load, it's the same basic load that we had before, that we uh, calculated earlier, I mean. So eight times nine times one, eight times nine times one, eight times nine times 0.75. Take all those things at the first 90 meters is 5,000 watts. The second is 1,000, and that excess portion is 1,000, giving us a basic load of 7,000 watts. We have a 14,000 watt range. We know we're gonna take 6,000 plus 40%. Slow it down, man, I, I can't keep up. No, thank you, Hunter. I saw that, I actually just looked over and saw the thumbs down, so thank you. Okay, do you want me to back up and go over that again? Please. Okay, sounds great. Basic load. Sub rule one, item A, item one, or I. We take our basic area that we calculate from sub rule 8-110, which is 100% of the main floor, 100% of any area above the ground floor used for living purposes, which is the upper floor. And then 75% of the basement. Okay. We add those numbers together. To get our total area of 198 meters squared. We then take this number to 8201 AI. And we see that for the first 90 meters squared, we have 5,000 watts. All right. So we take 198 minus 90. This gives us 108 left over. Because we have 108 left over, we take that to item two, or II. And we see that we have 1,000 watts for the next 90 meters squared. Okay? So we then take our 108 minus 90. We find out we have 18 left over from that. Well, because we have a portion thereof, we have to have another 1,000 watts for that portion of 18 meters squared. We take those three numbers and add them together to get our basic load calculation of 7,000 watts. 
Okay, good. Now we go on to the range. So when I do these calculations, guys, I generally just start at the top of the list and I work my way down, okay? So we're just in order of how it is listed. So we've got a 14,000 watt range and we need to have 6,000 watts for any single range, okay? an item four. Plus, if we have a range that exceeds 12,000 watts, we need to take that excess and multiply it by 40%. All right, that gives us 60 or uh, 800 watts. And we add that to our base for a range of 6,000 watts. So the 6,000 is the base for any single range, right? Plus 800, that will give us 6,800. That is what you would put for your range. Everyone with me? Okay. Uh, side note, when you guys are doing your house plans, you will have to go through this process. Okay, so make sure you understand it. Now we're gonna focus on the hot water heater. Okay. Hot water heater falls under the other loads, okay? This is not a tankless hot water heater. This is just a hot water heater. And because it didn't specify tankless, we assume tank. And so it is taken at 25%. Okay. We take this 450 watts and apply it to our service calculation. On to electric space heater and air conditioner. So in 8201A3, the first question that I asked myself is are they interlocked? And if so, then I'm gonna choose the greater of the two. Going back to that sub rule, or that rule 8106 sub rule three. Okay. So then I'll focus specifically on the heater. And once again, it, ours does say that they're interlocked. So we've got 3,500 watts at 100%. Okay, that's what 62118 says. Then I look to the air conditioner and note that in 8201A3, I have to take this at 100%. And so I just compare the two, which one's greater? Whichever one is greater, that's the one that I put towards the service. Okay, everyone with me? Okay, now we move on to the projector. We've got a 1500 watt projector and we say, are we greater than, and we are not. So we don't count it in the service calculation. Okay, that one's easy. It's a fat zero. When it comes to the kiln, we're at 2,500 watts. 
we ask the same question. Are we greater than 15? You betcha. Has the range been accounted for? Yeah, we already calculated our range. So we're gonna take that 2,500 watts at 25%. Okay, this will give us 625 watts to apply to the service calculation. Everyone with me? Okay. Now we get to our mixer. It's 3000 watts. We ask the same question, are we greater than? Because it's a yes, we then take it at 25%. And we take that number of 750 watts and apply it to our service calculation. All right. Have we got all of our loads taken care of at this point? Yeah. So now we put them together. We take our basic of 7,000, our range of 6,800, our hot water tank at 450, our air conditioner at 4,000, our projector at zero, right? Our kiln at 625, our mixer at 750, and we add all of those together. And in doing so, we will get a total calculated load of 19,625 watts. <laughs> and then John outsmarts me. Good job, John. <laughs> so yes. Um, hold on one second, John, because you are one slide ahead. So this is what we've calculated. But if you remember what subrule one says in 8200, it has to be the greater of A or B. So A was all of that calculation that we just did. Right? And B says if we have an area that's in excess of 80 meters squared, excluding the basement, then we have to apply 24,000 watts. Okay? Do we have an area that's in excess of 80 meters squared excluding the basement? You betcha we do. You can take our total number of 198 and minus our basement calculation that we did, right? 75% of 72, which is 54. And you still get a number that's bigger than 80 meters squared. And because of that, we have to choose the 24,000. So, if, yeah, Hunter? If we're doing this in a question then and we get that, do we even gotta do A? Because chances are you can tell by looking at stuff that it's gonna be less than 24,000 watts. So, the answer is yes, you still have to do A because if you are 24,001 watt, then you have to choose your basic load calculation. Okay. And that might be, yeah, I know <laughs> your face is perfect because <laughs> that's, yeah. So indeed you can see physically the loads and yeah, once you do this once or seven times, you'll be able to physically recognize, Oh, just going to have to go with item B because I know this isn't going to get over it, but be careful. Right. Yeah. So
So just be aware that there are some um, load calculations though, based on area that will get you over that 24,000. So yes, you do have to do it. That's why I said, learn how to get fast at that because then that's not gonna take you 10 minutes to do every time, right? You can do it in under five and it's not a big hassle, right? And it, sometimes you can even do it in under two minutes and then it's not a big hassle at all. So now what we do is we take that number and we've got our lovely power is equal to current times voltage. And we wanna solve for current. So we go current is equal to power divided by voltage. We're gonna take our 24,000, divide it by 240, and that will give us a service calculation of 100 amps, okay? Where I get that 240 from is eight dash 100. When calculating the currents that will result from loads expressed in watts or volt amps to be supplied by a low voltage AC system, the voltage divisor shall be used 120, 208, 240, 277, etc. What you are going to choose is you, if you have a 120, 240 volt system, you will choose the higher of the two. The same thing applies for branch circuits. If I have a range and it's a 120, 240 volt range, then I will take the 240 volt as my um, divisor, okay? I will use that for my calculations. Does that make sense? All right.